Welcome to It Matters Radio Spoken Word Broadcast with hosts Monica Brinkman and Kenneth Ween. It Matters Radio brings you the very best with a caring guest focused atmosphere, hot topics, and meaningful conversation. Let's join Ken and Monica as we bring you today's It Matters Radio. How are you this evening? Great, Monica. And how are you? Uh, looking so forward to this guest. Um, oh. I'm telling you, you always surprise me with the guests you get. They're wonderful. I, I look everywhere and ask people. In fact, today uh, uh, today's guest was a recommendation from a wonderful friend of mine who also was the one who had suggested uh, J. Hunter Morris. Yes. The, the fabulous, um, the fabulous uh, tenor. Yeah, he's uh, fantastic. What yeah, a voice. Wonderful. <laughs> Very nice gentleman, too. And Lee, a lovely guy. And uh, <clears throat> she's also recommended some others. And uh, I want to give a shout out to her. Her name's Maria Nocken. Now, M Maria introduced me to this woman whose name is Celine and Ricky, R-I-C-C-I, -I, so you can guess that she is Italian. <laughs> Never would have been. I'm talking to her in a minute, but before we do, I wanted to say, first off, I wanted to say something about the horror that occurred in Dallas this past week. The, the killing of five of the policemen there, as well as wounding of others. By a man who seems to have been very caught up in his own rage and I, I fear his own mental illness. Of course, we'll not hardly be able to find that out at uh, the end. The, the police, in order to stop <clears throat> more horrible things from happening, did have to kill him. Yeah. Uh, just a horrible. Now, the other day was the memorial service, and President Obama was spoke. There was something that ex-president uh, George W. Bush said that struck me. Because, of course, at the same time, we're also dealing with the whole idea of how many black Americans seem to be killed by the police. Yes. And, and that horrible problem. And President Bush made it a point to say, we shouldn't be judging people by the worst members of their group. And I think that's true, whether we're talking about the police or we're talking about black people, white people, Hispanic people, radio commentators. <laughs> but, uh, 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 you know, we should not take a sight on the, on the word in order to justify our anger and our uh, behavior towards the group and I think he was spot on there. So please, this week, could I ask you to look for people who Oh, I'm not talking about saints. I'm talking about simplify just the common decency another, whether we're talking talk, talk about a person of a different race than us, different religion than us, a different occupation than us, and try and thank people. Thank them for being your neighbor. Thank them for being your cop on the beat, your guy who's, I don't know, can be a cup of coffee, that guy just hold the door open for you. I'm at the age now where people will actually hold the door open for me. So I <laughs> <thank them. laughs> I'm yucky. I get it slammed in my face all the time. <laughs> oh, uh, I'm 
here. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. Now, can you're so right. Um, you know, you and I hope that people will start um, together and it's because all together to yeah. stop these kind of things. Of course, one of the things is that people that brings people together wonderfully is music. It is. And I want to just remind all our listeners <clears throat> that we, in addition to this spoken word show every Sunday evening, we have a music show on Sunday where uh, Kerry interviews musicians from all over the place. And you get to hear not only the music, but get to know them a little bit, which is wonderful. Uh, on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, we do an indie Euro music show where you get to hear music all over the world, including the United States. We're not, we're not discriminating against America. <laughs> you get to hear music from all over the world, and it is glorious and it's varied. You get a pop song, then you get a, a country western song, and they get a piece of classical and a piece mm -hmm. of jazz. Now that's Monday, rat, rat. Tuesday, rat, yeah. Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Mm -hmm. What happened to Friday? Well, I that's special. Well, but what do we do on those days? Yeah. Well, that's when you get to hear all that wonderful music. Because Friday, if you are listening to that those shows. You'll find out how to vote for your favorite songs. Mm -hmm. And then you vote, and on Friday, there's a top 20. They're the ones that receive the most votes. Yeah. And you get what everybody is really rooting for. Now, here's the thing, okay, because i got to make sure, we always make sure of this, folks. You might get an email from a punky. You have to send tuna fish to vote. <laughs> I know. She said that. Your vote only counts. Your only vote only counts if she's had a fix of anchovies, something <laughs> like that. Don't believe it. No. You get to vote, and your vote actually counts. That's right. Yeah. So please listen to those. Those other shows, five the Euro indie music shows, and then vote so that you can then listen to that Friday show and hear the, the top picks and know that you've had a real opportunity to let your voice be heard. Yeah. As well as the voice of some wonderful musicians. Yeah, and you're supporting the musicians also, and that's a wonderful thing to do. So I hope everybody can join us on those shows. Yeah. But now, speaking of music. Yes. Okay, my guest today is from the classical music field, and but she is some, doing something very extraordinary. Her name, as I said before, is Selena Ricci. And she has an organization that is putting on operas that were written even before I was born. <laughs> That's from, not but, possible. <laughs> you know, they, 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 I remember, I remember back in the day, getting on my horse to travel across Europe to hear these operas. <laughs> But the thing is that they're wonderful music that people don't get to hear today. And so we thought that having Celine join us and discuss these operas would be great fun. And the operas are great fun. Don't think you know what opera is. No, absolutely. Okay. And to give you a little sample, we're going to go now, rather than a long introduction, we're going to go and listen to a little bit of the opera that they did this year, and that opera is called, I want to make sure I have the name just right, because it is an important opera. 
Uh, it is by Carlo Pellavicino. It was written in 1679, and it is called The Amazons in the Fortunate Isles. All right. You ready, folks? Because you're in for a treat. Here you go.
Good Hi. evening, Celine, and thank you so much for joining us on It Matters Radio this evening. Good evening, Ken and Monica. Thank you so much for welcoming me uh, in your program. I'm really very happy to be able uh, to chat with you here. Great. Yes. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> yeah. Now, of course, we've had a sample of your the opera that you did this year, and let's just talk a little about that. Now, th this is an old opera, right? Yes. When, when was it written? It was written in 1679. Wow. 1679. <laughs> and of course, in those days, the idea that there were Amazons living someplace in, in some unknown place was really not as our an idea of what was out there in the world. Right. It was part of the Greek mythology, so. Um, it was one of the subject, uh, one of the topic that uh, a composer could use to, to write. Uh, mm -hmm. And why did, well, how did you get involved in doing such wonderful old music? I love Baroque music, by the way. So. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> uh, well, so I'm, I'm an opera singer and I sing mostly Baroque music and so 17th century, 18th century music mm -hmm. um, and I've, I've, uh, I've had the privilege in, in my career to uh, um, also be part of recreations as a singer hired to sing operas that were not formed since their creation and uh, and I love it. I think it's uh, it's so um, exciting uh, to to put the pieces all together, and um, so it's um, uh, with, with the organization. It's what we do. So we uh, we bring back to life some uh, forgotten operas, uh, and this one about Amazons. It's a Venetian opera, um, and so. In Venice, uh, there is a, a library called La Biblioteca Marciana, um, in, in, where you can find many, many, many uh, manuscripts, so those operas that are there since their creation. And um, so this uh, opera about Amazons wa was one on the list of the opera I want to bring back to life. Uh-huh. So now bringing it back, of course, we don't use the same instruments anymore. Do you use, go back and use period instruments or are you changing the music to use modern instruments? So no, we, uh, uh, so when the, I have here some, uh, some little images, for example, the, here I have the manuscript, for example, look like this. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Okay. So that's not, that's not too different from, and, and then we make a modern score, so from this, so for example, this was Cleopatra that we did last year, mm -hmm. from this, it goes to this. Mm -hmm. So we make all, so here it's written in clef, and here it's written in modern, mm -hmm. and then the instrument, yes, uh, it's um, copies of period instruments, uh, and uh, we, so we play uh, really as it was played, oh. and... Uh, um, the, the, also the pitch for this opera was 4.15 and we did in 4.15 and not 4.40, what is uh, nowadays uh, right. Mozart, let's say, music. Mm -hmm. So you, you really try very hard to make it as much like the original experience, except of course you have central heating and lights and <laughs> little thing like that. <laughs> Some mo modern comforts, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> modern comfort. Um, but uh, we also try to do um, a, re a recreation every year because what I liked from that time is that the, the, the productions of the oldest operas, for example, that were written for the carnival, it was always very fast, very fast, very fast. Uh, and I like to have this kind of pressure uh, to have to do it fast for uh, our organization uh, which is very young it's uh, it's a lot, a lot of work. So, to do even one because I know you know um, a, a while back we had somebody from the Arizona Opera on the show okay. and they had done a revival of something called the Arizona Lady that had been you know written about the time of the Second World War but there was a lot of 
just the recreating and the, and he was talking with me about all of the work that went into costuming and stuff like that and uh, you're you're actually creating a, a time capsule you're taking us back yeah. and I think that's wonderful so you do one a year now hopefully you're going to grow yeah and you do them in San Francisco one of my favorite cities yes <laughs> and hopefully you're going to travel I've already uh, I'll tell the audience and you Monica that privately in a previous conversation I told Celine that if she gets down to say Pasadena or LA Roser and I are going we were like a shot into the to, to get there because this is just wonderful wonderful music now the name of your organization is Oz Minerva yes right and I'm going to spell that because, of course, it's the website name, www.arsminerva.org. And, of course, Minerva was one of the great and most powerful of the female gods of ancient Greece. And, uh, actually, I, I guess she was a Roman. Right? Yeah, she and, was and Roman. Athena. She Yes, the, Athena is for the Greek, and uh, Minerva is for the Romans. <laughs> Can't betray my classical education, then. <laughs> you didn't do too bad, Ken. <laughs> how, did you, how did you pick that name? So, uh, so Minerva, uh, the Roman goddess, was actually even the Etruscan. Uh, so, I'm, I was born in Florence, and the Etruscans... <laughs> <laughs> Florence, I love Florence. <laughs> and uh, so um, I, uh, Minerva is, um, so of course, uh, uh, she's the goddess of uh, um, uh, 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 arts and craft, but also uh, wise wisdom. Um, and uh, she wants to, she al always help all the um, adventures uh, that uh, have to see with um, intelligence uh, or, and, um, and, and try to, to, to build projects. And uh, so, so ours like in Latin, so it's the, the work of, uh, of Minerva. Um, I, I like to be under her patronage, you know, under her. <laughs> you couldn't pick a better goddess. Uh, Monica, have you ever been to Florence? No, I would love to go oh, to Florence. Okay. Well, you should get Rich to take you to Florence, but I have to warn you, speaking of uh, crafts and arts and things, there is a bridge in Florence, and on both sides, uh, as you walk down the bridge, there are these wonderful, at least there were, I assume it's still there, uh, these wonderful booths of the various artisans, and with all kinds of gorgeous, gorgeous handcrafted things, mostly, mostly jewelry. Mm -hmm. And I, I had to kind of periodically put my hand up like this around my wife's eyes <laughs> and, and blindfold and push her past the booth. Because I'll tell you, I, I don't think I've ever seen so much wonderful artistic material for sale in one place. And just, just walking across the bridge was like... Uh, <laughs> You know, Ken, um, the jewelry that comes from Italy is just magnificent. Mm -hmm. it's some of the best jewelry in the whole world. Mm -hmm. yeah. but they're so detailed. Yeah. They do so, it the right way. Yeah, Italy is Italy is the home of wonderful arts. That's where <laughs> I was going. And and so you found this very special niche of the old the Baroque music and the operas of, do you do any operas from other cultures besides the Italian? Uh, I hope that in the future we'll do also French. Yeah. Yes. That would be magnificent. Yeah. yeah. Now yeah. You, do, you do it in the original language. Yes. Of course. And we have super titles. Yeah, with the super titles. But I was going to say, now you obviously speak Italian very fluently, I would hope, growing up. <laughs> um, now, I was wondering, from the point of view of Italian, is the language, especially back then when there really wasn't in Italy, I mean, it was the separate states. Venice was a very powerful state in its own right. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, is the language the same, or do you find yourself having to also master uh, a slightly different language? Yeah, so it's very funny because in, uh, and thank you for asking this question, because in those Venetian operas, sometimes there are some words mm -hmm. uh, that, so some words, of course, uh, it's old Italian and uh, you, you can uh, identify, but th sometimes there are some words and it's, um, it, you, you try to look for and it's hard and it's actually Venetian, you know, because they were in Venice and so right. suddenly there is a word that was used in Venice. Uh, at, at that time, uh, a lot. So it's funny to to uh, to find this kind of um, find uh, this kind of words. Mm -hmm. Now, most of these uh, uh, operas from back in that period, as you said, they were really written rather quickly, and they were usually for something like Carnival, which of course is the just before Lent begins, or something like that, and so they have a rivalry, a, a kind of a sense of sexuality and, and, and risqueness that you don't really expect to find back then. Usually we think, oh, you go back, you go back and, and you know, very stiff and formal. <laughs> that's the United but, States. <laughs> but that's not what's happening here, is it? <laughs> yeah, it's true. Um, there is um, this illusion to, to, to think that back in time, yeah, it was very stiff and no, no one was laughing and, and actually it's, it's not true at all. <laughs> uh, those opera, there is a lot of um, humor, uh, uh, it's very witty and uh, many, many twists. Um, it really goes from very dramatic to very funny and it's quick, quick, quick all the time. Mm -hmm. um, it, you can really see how, what they enjoy to see. And um, they, they were really, um, uh, I would say, it's not about uh, being cultivated, it's, it's more about also like um, games, mm -hmm. uh, word games, word mind word. games. Uh, so those operas, um, in those opera, actually, it happens always something, always something, and um, it, it's very surprising. And yes, also there's uh, sexuality, um, and in this uh, Amazon opera, um, you, there are women uh, who are uh, heterosexual, but there are women who are bisexual, and there are women who are homosexual. <laughs> and um, so they, they, what is surprising for the time is that they make their own choices um, also in life. Um, and for example, the queen of the Amazon, who is uh, heterosexual, uh, she seduces uh, a sailor, giving him a flowers. So it's not him giving flowers, but it's her. Uh, so all the codes are uh, changed in this opera, for example. Um, and, uh, and, and I know that nowadays, when you say this, people uh, tend to think, oh, really, this at that time? And yes, <laughs> mm -hmm. actually. Yeah, at that, time. at that time, they didn't, they didn't preoccupy themselves with which bathroom people should use. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> so I know, I mean, I did not get to see the whole opera. I did get to see the, for YouTube, and it's glorious. And um, one of the problems, though, that I have with it is how do we get, it, will we get to see your entire performance? Is, is there a YouTube someplace that we can get to watch what is uh, just a wonderful, wonderful opera? Yes, there is also the entire opera, uh, but for now we are uh, still editing it. Okay. <laughs> okay, well that's good to know it's coming up. It, 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 uh, yeah, we will be able to share the, the, whole, uh, the whole opera. Well, now Punky, believe it or not, Punky is very much an opera lover. Wow. She, and I, she and I have very much the same musical taste. <laughs> Monica, not so much. Mon Monica likes this modern stuff. But <laughs> I, I like Punky, opera. <laughs> Punky, Punky, actually, seriously, uh, does have a newsletter. 
and we are always looking for things. So when that, uh, when the full YouTube is available, please do let us know yes. so that we can get it out to people. Because I just think I want to sit. I'm going to figure out a way to get it from my onto my big screen TV. <laughs> And my wife and I are going to sit there holding hands and laughing and maybe ha sharing a glass of wine and enjoy Oz Minerva's wonderful uh, opera of the Thank Amazons. You. Now, when we do that, what are some of the things that we should be watching for? Like, are there particular tricks to watching it? particular themes that keep recurring or musical notions that we should keep focus on? Um, so maybe, uh, so at the beginning there is this prologue which is very over the top actually. I mean it, it's all over the top in the opera in a way because it's, uh, I, I would say it's uh, yeah kind of a, Baroque <laughs> manners <laughs> because you have those entities uh, that uh, so in the in, in the um, in the story it's written that those entities which is genius uh, fear and difficulty they are mounted on birds and <laughs> so um, and they are in the clouds and. Mm -hmm. So they are they are arguing actually because genius. Uh, so this opera of Amazon's was uh, written for the creation of a private pre private theater, and so the, the the genius wants to build this theater, and difficulty and fear arguing for with him for not building this theater. Uh, so I would say maybe to pay um, attention. Uh, with all these um, uh, uh, arguments with those birds that mm -hmm. actually are personified here by the singers who are off the entity of the bird with the head pieces. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and uh, I, I tried actually to stage it uh, more um, surrealistic than, mm. <laughs> uh, than Baroque. Um, uh, and um, then yes, I would say what is also interested, interesting, it's all the plot between uh, all those uh, love triangles, uh, between uh, the, the, the queen who loves a sailor, who loves the, the queen favorite, but the queen favorite is, uh, is in love, I mean is engaged with another Amazon, and so all this is um, who loves who, uh, it's really uh, you know, those um, impossible relationships mm -hmm. um, and also what to me it's very interesting is that the queen has a daughter uh, and she's she's a rebel she's really a teenager and <laughs> <laughs> and um, uh, it's amazing because she's always saying no you you, you have to uh, uh, to be a warrior you can't have fun and uh, and so the, the daughter is always oh, 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 <laughs> um, and complaining and in, also in this way it's very modern <laughs> mm -hmm. and we, I staged it also in a modern way um, so the, the, the daughter is has um, uh, uh, magazines uh, teenage magazines and like to take pictures and put makeup and uh, and so the queen the mother is always very angry because she doesn't fight <laughs> <laughs> teens even back then teens. yeah no, some things don't change <laughs> so I want to just remind the audience that we're having the pleasure of talking to Celine Ritchie who is the founding uh, energy and director of osminerva.org, which is an opera group in San Francisco. And they currently do one show a year, but hopefully we'll do more. And what is the show that you have planned for next year? So for next year, I actually uh, have several projects. I don't know which one will... <laughs> <laughs> so the, the, the first maybe will be a multidisciplinary project uh, that will involve music um, with uh, narrators that can be in science and in mythology oh, and the music will be a pastiche so we are going to have a tale 
that multidisciplinary tale mm -hmm. um, and uh, I will not say more for the surprise okay. Okay. <laughs> um, then um, for the for, for the opera we're going to revive uh, we uh, might revive an opera by uh, Domenico Freschi which is Circe the magician uh, or which is uh, still a Greek mythology, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, or we might um, revive uh, some parts of an opera of Francesco Cavalli that is not finished, and in this case it would be like uh, scenes uh -huh. in, in a special setting. Uh -huh. You have a number of wonderful sounding projects <laughs> cooking around in your head. Now, where do you find the musicians and the singers? Are you using, uh, especially, how, how do you find singers? So in San Francisco, uh, uh, there are really many great singers and musicians, and I like to get involved with them uh, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, to, to really create a family here. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, the, the group is, yeah, having really this music family of Ars Minerva. Um, and I also like uh, to, to hire former students at the, of the San Francisco Conservatory uh, because they are wonderful and it's important um, that also they work in San Francisco. Uh, and but sometimes there are also people who uh, uh, come from uh, outside, uh, and this is um, especially if I'm looking for someone particular uh, that I can't find uh, for uh, any reason. And uh, but most of the time are people from here. Now I I of course have read reviews and things like Opera Today of your and they and they all rave about you of your performances. But I have a, a particular friend who, who does write reviews. Uh, her name is Maria Nockin, and I believe you know Maria. Yes. <laughs> and Maria said to me, because she knows I'm always looking for very interesting and exciting people to, to have on the show. And Maria said to me, you really must have Celine. She said, because she is both brilliant and, and creative and artistic and all those things you talk about, Ken. But she's also quirky. She's different. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and as I listen to you talking about the things that you are trying to do and want to do, I get the feelings Marie was right on track. So I know people are going to want to know more, not just about Ars Minerva, but they're going to want to know more about you. So how do they find out more about you? Uh, so I have a website. Uh -huh. uh, I, um, I, I have to do some work on it. <laughs> Don't be <we> all. <laughs> Never yeah, ending. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Uh, so my website is my name, so Celine Ricci, so www.celinericci.com, Celine Ricci. And uh, I've also recorded uh, several CDs that you can see on, on, on my website, um, so you can know me a little bit more. <laughs> CDs, CDs of operatic music. Yes, yes. For you, you singing. Yeah, me singing. <laughs> ah, wonderful. What is your, what is your, of the more modern opera uh, works, so that people might recognize it, what are some of your favorite roles that you have sung? So, huh. <laughs> um, there are actually, uh, yeah. Huh. Many things, actually, I would say, uh, maybe, so I've sung, uh, years ago, I sang uh, in Mozart, Il Re Pastore, and uh, I, I was Il Re Pastore, uh, Aminta, and uh, I enjoyed it very much. 
maybe this would be the, 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 the role that most people would know in what I, I sang, because there is also a lot of stuff that is uh, 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 rare. <laughs> uh -huh. Well, of course, people can buy those CDs. They can buy them directly from your website. No, uh, uh, but they are, uh, they are on Amazon. On Amazon. Amazon. So people can go get those CDs and listen to some of the rare ones. You know, I think that's actually for me even more exciting. I just thought, you know, so you grew up in Florence. Yeah. And came to the states, and how did you happen to pick? I know one of Monica's favorite places on earth, San Francisco. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, I know that. How did so, you yeah, I, I was born in, in, uh, in Florence, uh, but uh, so my father is Italian, but my mom is French. Oh. And actually, then I grew up in France too. When I was 10, we moved to France, and then I lived uh, uh, another 20 years in France, <laughs> in Paris. Uh -huh. uh, and it's where I met my husband. Uh, and then we moved to San Francisco eight years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually it was because of his job, he's a scientist. Mm -hmm. And uh -huh. yeah, so he, uh, he worked at Berkeley, Berkeley Lab. Mm -hmm. Oh wow. Sure. Yeah. So, so you, he came to do science and you came to enlighten the Americans as to the beauty of opera. Oh, thank you so much for saying it. <laughs> well, I'm I'm really glad to be in San Francisco. It's uh, it's a wonderful city, and there are really amazing artists. Uh, uh, and uh, I'm very thankful for all these um, uh, opportunities that there are here, and the enthusiasm of uh, of the of the community and the artists here. Well, it's actually a way out chance that I'm going to have to go to have to. Oh, what's suffering? Oh, no. <laughs> I'm going to have to go up to the Bay Area uh, this summer to meet with the publisher. And if I do, uh, I hope that maybe we can get together and have coffee and oh. biscotti and, and uh, talk some more. Yes. As I have to say, I have enjoyed this immensely. Oh. I, I see, Punky has stayed awake. Yes, she has. It's always a good <laughs> sign. <laughs> and folks, again, we've been talking to Selini, Selina Ricci, who is the director and founder of OzMinerva.org, which is this wonderful group in San Francisco that does Baroque opera, early music. And you've heard a, a bit of it before, and I urge you, urge you to go to Selena's website and find out more. Go to osminerva.org and find out more. And of course, support anything like that. I mean, come on, folks. Yes. <laughs> don't, we, we don't get enough support for the arts, so please support. And of course, buy some of that wonderful music. I know CDs are going out of style. Uh, my, my, my grandchildren laugh at me when I talk about CDs. <laughs> <laughs> but but buy, those, buy that wonderful music. And remember that opera is a very special art form because it's storytelling with music. Mm -hmm. And that's a great combination. And also, as you saw in the YouTube, with sets and design and costuming. It really is, in my opinion, the queen, the queen of the arts. Yes. <laughs> and it's a great history lesson also. Yes. Along with everything else. Well, yes, especially, Monica, did you know that in Venice back then, they had stuff like that? They were talking, I mean, you know, boy, doesn't that shake your notion of what the world was like? Yeah. Yeah. I, I remember years ago when I was in European literature in college and we read the Decameron, Boccaccio's Decameron, and we were all so taken aback because we had grown up in these high schools where, you know, oh my gosh, you know, people didn't think about yeah. 
parties and the real world and all that stuff. I mean, it was all up in your head. And all of a sudden, we're, wait a minute, I thought this was supposed to be the Dark Ages. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe now's the Dark Ages, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, we won't get, no, no, Monica, I'm not letting you talk politics tonight. <laughs> I won't, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> That's a constant theme with us, Celine. Uh -huh. So, s folks, please, uh, Celine, stay in touch with us, and please, please, yes. please, think about doing some shows or some performances. It, you know, L.A. is close. <laughs> yeah, I'll just, like, we can drive to L.A. for the weekend. <laughs> I'll do my best. I'll do my best. <laughs> I promise. I know you and, will. And, folks, if we keep encouraging artists like Celine, Rich, Ricky, um, I think that we're going to have a better world. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for inviting me and uh, supporting <laughs> the initiative. Thank you. Thank you for joining us on It Matters Radio. Yes, Celine, it's fascinating. You take care. <laughs> bye bye. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> bye. bye.
Wow. Oh, bravo. Bravissimo. <laughs> Wasn't that fun, Monica? Yeah, she was one of the most um, refreshing people I've uh, seen in a long time. She just, uh, the joy that she gets from producing these and performing, you, it just jumps off the screen at you, you know. And it's really, it's really amazing, isn't it? We think of opera as such serious, heavy stuff, and it <laughs> isn't doesn't have to be. No. And we've had two opera performers, her and 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 uh, Jay Hunter Morris, right. on over the, right. and both of them just joys, just <laughs> such joy. And of course, the the one we did about the Arizona Opera Company. What lovely people, what fun people. And I urge you, if you think you know what opera is, and oh my God, that would bore me silly, I urge you to give it a rethink. Yeah, there's so, so many different types, too, Ken, of yeah. opera. So, I mean, my gosh, they have rock operas. So, right, oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, actually, I went to one the other day. It's called American Idiot. I mean, they performed it. They performed it at a regular theater, but it's uh, you'd like it. It's very political. I probably would. Oh, yeah, political. Very, yeah, very I would political. Love it. it was about. It's about the period right after nine eleven, mm. and young people growing up at that time. You know, coming of age at that point, yeah. and what their lives were like. Yeah, very powerful. Very powerful uh, rock opera, and of course, Jesus Christ Superstar, and. God's and then go back, yeah. Porgy and Bess. Yeah. There's, mean, there's so many different types, you know. Yeah. So, um, folks, please check out your opera company. And, and uh, also, just in case you don't know, uh, the Metropolitan Opera from New York does simulcasts in various movie theaters around the country and around yes. the world. And you can see some of their operas. They tend to be a little heavier than Celine's wonderful Baroque Carnival operas. By the way, if you don't know what Carnival is, just think Mardi Gras. Yes. It's, it's fun. <laughs> now, Ken, um, can you tell us a little bit about next week who you're going to have on? I understand it. I'm glad you asked that, Monica. Because we have a very special request to make of our listeners because of who we have on. Next week, we're going to have a wonderful psychic, famous psychic, Chris Dufresne, I believe is the way you pronounce his name. Um, and he is the son of a world, one of the world's most famous of all time, Sylvia Brown, who is now, of course, passed. Yes. But Chris has continued his mother's work and his own. And the special request that we have is to, that if you have a question that you would like to ask Chris, if between now and on, oh, let's say Tuesday night, so you have Sunday night, Monday all day, and Tuesday during the day mm -hmm. to the evening. Please go to the It Matters Radio Facebook page. Let's do it on Facebook because yeah. that way it'll be a lot faster. And we're going to start a thread. Monica or I will start a thread there about questions. And we're going to ask you to put down a question, and then we're going to get Chris to ask, answer as many of those questions mm -hmm. as we can. Now, we're going to be fair. We're not going to ask him to tell us stock picks. We're not going to tell, ask him to tell us who's going to win elections. No. Because we don't feel that's an appropriate thing. And, but asking him about questions that seem appropriate to perhaps get some guidance from another plane, let's do it. And yeah. please put those questions in on our Facebook page. Just go to It Matters Radio on Facebook, and there you'll see it. There are two pages there, actually. One is the It Matters Radio page. Put your questions there. 
Don't put your pay questions on Punky's page. No. Punky will not share the questions. She won't. She's so bad. <laughs> yeah. No, she'll, she'll, she'll take them out. She'll take them out and bury them someplace. Right. But, yeah. yeah, so it's It Matters Radio live talk radio at its best. And, right. But if you put It Matters Radio in, yeah, right up. it's going to come up for you. Right. And uh, look, I'll, I'll be sure and um, pin it to the top. Okay, good idea. So that everybody can see that when they first come to the page and put right. your questions there. And like Ken said, he'll get as many as possible um, right. on the show. Yeah. Okay. Now, do you have any questions for him, Monica? Have you thought about the questions you want to? Oh, gosh. I've got several, but uh, oh, here's Punky. She says she's got questions. Well, Punky, I know. <laughs> Punky. We know when your next can of tuna fish is coming. <laughs> she wants to know when we're going to get rid of all the other cats. I know it, oh, and the dogs, oh. so she can be by herself. <laughs> uh, you know how that is. Well, maybe a punky, it would be more appropriate to ask Chris if you'd be happier. Would you really be happier if you had no other cats? I know, huh? Yeah. yeah. Then she'd have nothing to yell about, so... <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. Exactly. Okay. Well, Ken, it was a great show. And it's fun. I hope everybody will share it with other people. Please do, yes. And come back uh, for our other shows and absolutely next week when Ken and I join you with another spoken word and guest broadcast. So until then, love Good to everybody. Good night, people. Good night. Bye-bye.